Our world is dying. No, no, no. Too dramatic. Our world is suffering. Better. But we can still make a change. And this change starts with you. Yeah, yeah good. Uh, now show me some footage of a baby seal. This baby seal needs your help to survive. Right. Now let's get some footage of that baby seal choking on a meter dose inhaler. Ah, uh, what? Sorry? Ah, uh, you know, all those blue inhalers that make a pss when you press on them. They're really bad for the environment, especially when used too often. Okay. Do you know why they're bad for the environment? No, but I suspect that this is the purpose of this video. You suspect correctly. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Mike. I'm a GP in Salford, UK, and I'm also a university tutor at one of the medical schools nearby. And along with some of my fellow colleagues from our area, we'll be presenting a three-part series on the climate crisis, green inhalers, and how this relates directly to you, oh healthcare professional watching this video. Whether you're a GP, GPSD, practice nurse, pharmacist, or physician associate, if you have the power to sign a prescription or talk to your patients about getting the most out of their medicines, then you have the power to make a difference. Let's begin with a normal distribution bell curve and a confession. I am not an eco-warrior, and I'm also not first in line when Apple releases a new product, even though I do like tech. I'm just an average guy who takes an interest in things when they become mainstream. You are also somewhere within that bell curve in terms of how you feel about the environment compared to the rest of the human population. One thing is clear now though, with movies like Planet Earth 2, What the Health, Seaspiracy, and the most recent David Attenborough one, called Climate Change The Facts on the BBC. It's here. Thinking about the environment is mainstream. I mean, it's on Netflix. Everyone is now looking to make a difference from governments to businesses and individuals, all learning about how to help not only that cute little baby seal, but also people like us and our patients. And it starts now. Three, two, one. Greenhouse gases in 30 seconds, go. The sun warms the earth. Hmm. And the earth gives that heat back into space in the form of infrared radiation. To get out, that heat needs to pass through our atmosphere. But our atmosphere is becoming really congested with what are called greenhouse gases. And they are stopping that heat from leaving our planet. The most common greenhouse gas is carbon dioxide. And the other ones are methane, nitrous oxide, and also F gases, which are found in meter dose inhalers, for instance. Is that clear? Now, what happens if that heat can't leave our planet? Temperatures will rise. And for everyone living north of Seville, I know exactly what you're thinking. Thank you, Lord. I mean, if I have to put on my winter jacket one more time in Manchester in June, I am literally going to lose it. So I mean, who cares about a one to two degree increase, right? Well, you know who cares? That little baby seal and other little baby animals. On a more serious note though, if temperatures rise, that makes water evaporate. And if that water evaporates in areas that already have issues with clean water supply, you're thinking droughts. Now, think of areas that are dry already and prone to wildfires or bushfires. That's just gonna get worse. On the other hand, those temperatures are melting ice, which will make sea levels rise and that can contribute to flooding. Finally, ocean water is evaporating too, and that can contribute to severe weather and rainfall in places that quite frankly, could do with a bit less rain. There are a lot of other global consequences of climate change. So the effect is not just on that baby seal, but on all life itself, including people. So let's try to do something about it. Wow, when I start to think about that, my head starts spinning with the size of it all. And I wonder what little me can possibly do. And yet I have a rising optimism because I sense there is a wave building, a party wave that others can join in, a wave of people committing to action now, right now in the 2020s, the most important decade when emissions really need to go down. I'm also excited because taking action will improve our health now. For example, by reducing air pollution with all the nasty effects that it has on our health. Don't even get me started. Now, rather than asking the question, where do most greenhouse gases come from and how we can reduce greenhouse gas emissions, why don't we ask a better question? Where are the sources of greenhouse gases around you and me, both professionally and personally? The David Attenborough BBC production about climate change has a lot of great ideas to help you with your personal carbon footprint. Professionally, the wind is blowing in the right direction 
protection. The NHS is on board and is thinking about its carbon footprint and has set some targets. And they have produced a lovely colorful graph about how to get there. For the emissions we control directly, so that is the NHS carbon footprint, we will reach net zero by 2040 with an ambition to reach an 80% reduction between the years of 2028 and 2032. For the emissions that we can influence, so our NHS carbon footprint plus, we will reach net zero by 2045. Again, with an ambition to reach an 80% reduction between the years of 2036 and 2039. And there are a lot of great ideas out there about how we can reduce emissions while we provide care to our patients in general practice and beyond. A journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. And if you manage to get through all of my completely unnecessary jokes of questionable taste, congratulations and together as a community, I can't wait to get us all running together. So what next? Talk about it. Share it with your colleagues, watch the next video and join the wave. Take a step of action and I'll see you in the next one.